So today we're going to talk about modern recommenders with Apache Mahout. I use the term Mahout. You can call it what you will. Um, I'm going to talk mostly about the math uh, and how it relates to the algorithm in uh, inside of Mahout, but also about how it's used uh, in a, an actual recommender. I'm going to have to go pretty quick today. I prepared for almost an hour and only have about a half hour. so. Um, I put the slides up on the on the slide share if anybody wants them. So I'm Pat. Um, I did used to have a beard before uh, Trevor, but uh, it's gotten more Christmassy of late. Um, you can see my uh, email, personal email uh, is pat at aquasmachete.com or um, pat at apache.org uh, as you wish. I've been a committer to Apache Mahout since, uh, actually I think it's 2012, not exactly sure, but around then. Um, and during my time in uh, Mahout, I was uh, primarily involved in recommender algorithms um, and worked on the one that we're gonna talk about today. Uh, also, uh, during the transition from uh, MapReduce to Spark, so most of my work is in Spark. I'm also the founder of a, a consulting company that's based on, uh, at least partially, on using Mahout and then, um, and the recommender algorithm that I'm going to show you. Uh, we, uh, at ActionML, we use uh, Mahout and Spark, and uh, based on that, created a thing called the Universal Recommender and um, a server called Harnessed, which is a machine learning server uh, with pluggable engines. So uh, a little bit about where this algorithm that I'm going to describe today came from. Um, let's say more like six or eight years ago, um, there were the early Mahout recommenders. They were almost a research projects. Um, a lot was happening at the time. Uh, they were sort of first generation recommenders uh, as far as availability and open source. And um, several flavors of recommenders were created. Uh, Co-occurrence was the first uh, major one. And then there was uh, the matrix factorization recommender that came later. Um, and then uh, there's also uh, an example of matrix factorization in Sparks MLib. Um, I was working at a recommender as a service company at the time. Um, and uh, we used Mahout to the, the traditional MapReduce Mahout to improve precision of uh, uh, recommendations over their internal uh, proprietary recommender by something like 12%. Uh, but it, it showed up several problems with the uh, most implementations of uh, recommenders. Uh, the, the biggest one is that we had uh, a large uh, e-commerce data set that had uh, you know, millions and millions of, of uh, events that were recorded, things that uh, indicate users' preferences or actions, purchase data. But we also had 100 times more data that was detailed views. And it was kind of frustrating that at a, at a basis, none of the algorithms supported using different actions that the user took uh, to make recommendations better. Uh, and this was, um, this hasn't gotten much better today. Um, the ALS recommenders, which are kind of the most popular one that you see today, is there at the top of the stack, not necessarily because it's better. Um, and in fact, at, at this time when I was working at this company, we found that it didn't perform as well as co-occurrence, 
which was the you know sort of original um, uh, seminal uh, recommender uh, in how. Um, but it's much easier to build into an application. It's much easier to serve uh, serve recommendations from it. Uh, technology's changed since then, and so that doesn't have to be the case anymore. And uh, in any case, the the fundamental algorithm problem that we had um, was that you couldn't use in an e-commerce case, let's say, you couldn't use purchases as well as detailed views of a product. That's the simple example, but literally there was no way to use other behavior that the user um, engaged in like searches, um, going to a category page, um, those kinds of behaviors which didn't directly translate into um, conversions or purchases couldn't be used. The algorithm didn't account for it. So after uh, this investigation that I did um, and lots of talk with Ted Dunning, who was uh, the mentor for Apache Mount at the time, Sean Owen, which is one of the early, he worked on the taste framework, which uh, was uh, early incorporated into Mount and implemented the uh, the concurrence recommender. Uh, he was at Cloud Air at the time. Uh, Sebastian Skelter, who's a research scientist at Amazon. Uh, we came up with the algorithm that you're going to see, uh, the basis of it. And it starts with the fact that co-occurrence seemed to be performing best in, in the results we had at the at this recommender as a service company. And it can be expressed compactly um, in this form using some matrix algebra, linear algebra, um, where recommendations as a vector, so it's a, a list with uh, weights, list of, let's say, product IDs with weights, um, is actually the result of this bit of linear algebra, the transpose of the table that, let's, let's talk about what P is, I guess. P is a table that can, contains all, um, uh, one line in the table is one user. So the user ID is effectively what keys a line in that table. So it has all users that you've observed. And in each segment or at each element of that uh, table is a item ID, a product ID. So if you take that users in rows table, you transpose it and multiply it by itself, you'll get um, something that we call the model uh, in co-occurrence. And it's a uh, item similarity matrix. It gives a score for how similar one item is to another. And if you multiply that times the user's history vector, in other words, what purchases have they made, you'll get a set of recommendations. And it's a, a very crude way of implementing the algorithm, but um, it, it actually works. So in order to turn this bit of math, which can't really be performed in anything like real time, since we're multiplying um, a, uh, a bit of user history here times this large table, this large matrix, um, we need to break this down into several steps. And uh, the first step, the one that uh, the Mahout bit concentrates on the most is this uh, matrix multiplication, transposing P and multiplying time P. Um, this creates what we call a model, and that can be used with other uh, tools that I'll talk about to do this final step and get recommendations out uh, in queries. So it needs to be scalable to very large data sets. It needs to work in a, a way that can give queries in real time. And that was the key problem with uh, big implementations of Mahout recommenders before this time. Um, they, they needed, uh, it just didn't work very well in real time. Um, and then we need to add the ability to use more data. So 
the, the problem in, in, at the algorithm level is that you only are looking at, in this case, e-com purchases. So this, um, this uh, first step in the recommender, the early theory only went to one action, which is a conversion or a purchase. However, um, the theory really extends to any number of actions. So if you had a table of uh, conversions, those are used at each step or each segment in the uh, overall algorithm here. Um, and what it does, if you then multiply times the user's history of some other action, is it gives a cross occurrence table, cross occurrence matrix. So this is the co-occurrence matrix. This is the cross occurrence, one cross occurrence matrix. This is another cross occurrence matrix. And in this example, we're extending this with users purchases. We're extending it with views or uh, um, detail views, category preferences, and it could, could go on and on. I'm gonna switch over to the, um, to the web just to make sure I am not losing anyone okay no one is complaining yet all right so um this is what turns out to be the big innovation uh that came about about this time uh primarily from some suggestions that ted made ted dunning um that extended this to using many different actions so the uh Step one in the algorithm, the algorithm as opposed to the mathematics. Mathematics is sort of the idealized uh, explanation for what's going on, whereas the the mod, the uh, algorithm has to implement these steps and also adds things that make it better, if you will, than the simple mathematics. Uh, and in this case, the first thing is to create these models, their model segments, if you will. Consider all of these matrices to be the model. Um, and calculating each of these uh, is the part that Mahout does very well. So um, we add some, a little bit of uh, uh, sugar, if you will, frosting to make it perform even better. Um, first of all, we do some uh, downsampling uh, because theory shows that after you get to a certain point, uh, the amount of data that you have contributes very little to better performance of the model. So uh, at the point that you get enough data, you can start downsampling so that the data remains semi-constant. So over time, this will scale at order of n, um, the calculation to create the model. Because after you get a certain amount of data, it only increases if you have new users. You don't downsample the users. So, um, and the other thing that we wanted to do is instead of using the Cartesian product, instead of using uh, rather the, uh, well, instead of using just uh, a product of two binary matrices, uh, we go through each of these model segments and replace any non-zero element with an LLR score, uh, log likelihood. Um, score. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So just to visualize what's happening here, um, you may have a data set. Early on, this was all you could look at, the data here, just products and users. And it was purchase, let's say for e-com or, you know, views for, um, you know, news or uh, watches for video uh, it all works the same. It's basically the primary um, conversion action that a user would take. But um, this new algorithm allows us to take detail views. It actually allows us to use search terms. And this is a this was surprising when we I first started to implement that. This is that the uh, the columns are ID'd by products in the first two um, indicator types action types, but the columns can be actual uh, tokens uh, for search terms. And the math works out and it actually, we've done uh, tests on this and 
uh, search terms turn out to be one of the better things to use in helping to make predictions better. And by the way, this has extensions to doing personalized search and um, search that's uh, that favors conversions. But it also means that we can use things like categories um, to ID columns. In other words, a category preference would say which category a user prefers, which brand. Could even go as far as to use locations. We've used locations before in uh, news articles. So um, you always have the row equals a user. And each of these segments, the, the segment is, is identified by a set of IDs that um, are defined by the indicator type, by the uh, action type. So a little bit more belaboring what the actual math in Mahout is. Uh, P transpose looks like this, if you remember your linear, linear algebra. And what comes out is um, a matrix that has product IDs by product IDs. And each of the elements you would read as product J is similar to product N or K by some amount. And the amount is um, the LLR score in our case. We replace it. It comes out of this math as being uh, just a matrix uh, dot product of two vectors uh, becomes the score here. But uh, in, in the actual algorithm, we replace this with an LLR score, which turns out better. Uh, so if you, if you want to look at how that works with things, something like search terms, which seems odd, uh, it actually works pretty well. And what you end up with here is that product J is similar, if you will, to some search term by an amount, by some amount. Um, and it'll, it'll give you that amount for every search term. Most of the time it's zero, meaning there's no particular correlation between some product and some search. Uh, but often it will tell you the type of search where the, the user is actually looking for a product J or any other product in this matrix. So this is really the, the core of um, the algorithm. So I was going to take maybe one quick question if anybody has one um, about that mathematics. Looks like not. OK, I'll continue on. Uh, so now the first major improvement was to swap out the dot product of two vectors for every element in that uh, model matrix um, and replace it with the LLR score. Um, this is a bit hard to explain, but it um, I'll show you in a minute that the real, the most important thing isn't so much the theory as how it actually performs. And so we tested it. What we did is we implemented the first th uh, the first thing I did as part of uh, working on my how it was to um, change the co-occurrence algorithm to allow for one other indicator, a detailed view. Um, and we uh, so we used that to run um, a, a cross validation test and found that uh, at the time Mahout supported uh, several different um, similarity metrics. And so we just ran it, ran the same data set, which is a very large uh, ecom data set um, through the algorithms, did cross validation, came up with these scores. We used map at K as the um, cross validation metric. Uh, you can look up what that is. It's basically a precision metric and found that uh, log likelihood created by far the best scores by significant amount. So why? track around those other um, metrics when LLR kind of wins. Um, now we talked about how we could have uh, a purchase, detail view, you know, yada, yada, yada. There could be many different things that the user might do that, that might indicate um, a preference. But there's also a lot of things that they do that have no correlation with uh, uh, some preference. Uh, for instance, you could use their their first names uh, as an indicator or some password, their password hash or something. And those would have no correlation. So what we did um, on another data set where we had 
uh, we uh, mined Rotten Tomatoes for uh, video likes and dislikes. So they have this rating, which is basically thumbs up, thumbs down um, on videos. We found that uh, by using the dislikes as well as the likes. So this is a case where the likes uh, was the primary uh, action that, that we were using for recommend it to recommend, which makes sense if uh, people like certain movies and you like certain movies, then maybe we can use that data to suggest things to you. But we found that um, it, it was a little bit unintuitive at the time, counterintuitive, but dislikes kind of make sense a little bit too. You can think that uh, think about your friends where you dislike the same movies or you dislike uh, the same subjects uh, in general. And we found that when we ran this, um, this map at K cross-validation test on Rotten Tomatoes mine data, that we could improve the results by 26% um, using likes and dislikes. And there's a reference at the end of this uh, that talks a little bit more about that. So this kind of proved out the idea that multiple indicators do indeed help. Um, and, and you notice here, by the way, that we're assuming the, the, that there is an actual recommender that we can feed data into and get recommendations back with queries. Um, and uh, so here's how we implemented that recommender. Here's that, that same um, equation that we had. And we've got these model parts, these model segments. Uh, they're, they're a matrix in, e in each case. But now we have to take the user's history and we'd like to take the user's history in real time. And it, if you think through and, and actually do the math, what you're asking here when you multiply the user's history as a vector times the this model segment, you're asking what um, what uh, items have the same um, item similarity as the user's history of item purchases. And over here, you're asking which uh, items were viewed that is most similar to the user's history of views and so on. And it turns out that uh, if you look through the math, that this is exactly what Lucene does. Uh, Lucene is um, a search engine, uh, is a search algorithm, uh, an implementation of search, whatever you want to call it that's built into Solar and Elasticsearch. Uh, we use Elasticsearch, uh, but Solar is also fine. We've also used that. But in any case, they use Lucene, and that is a KNN engine, a K nearest neighbors engine. Um, it works with sparse data, and its optimizations mean that it can work very quickly with this kind of sparse data. So these matrices have one user P has one user per row, but it may only have a couple elements in that row. And so that's considered, the rest are zero. That's considered to be sparse. And when you get to this model chunk, this model uh, segment, it goes into Lucene and you can do queries on it, ask which, uh, which items are most similar to this user's history and get results in real time. And you can also break that down into, um, well, here's how that works with the, the search engine. Here the question is, okay, you have a user, they've purchased item two and three. So what do you wanna recommend? Well, here's the model that we calculated. Item one is most similar to item two and three. Item two is similar to one, three, and whatever, and on and on. So which item would you recommend here to user one? They liked item two and three. Looks like item one is most similar to two and three. So intuitively you would want to recommend item one and that's exactly what Lucene does for us. You would use item two and three as the query and item one would come back as the result. Magic. Um, and adding new, uh, adding new segments to this um, equation 
turns out to be quite easy with a search engine. Uh, search engines um, allow you to segment documents into fields, and you can take a different part of the query to apply to a different field. So you'd use a part of the user's history on uh, the purchase field, a part of the user's history of views on the view field. So we're actually taking these model bits and putting them into an index and using the user's history as the query. This is for personalized uh, recommendations. And it actually does the sum and gives you a score that you can rank. And in fact, it does the ranking. So it's uh, it takes a lot of the, the effort out of making a recommender. Uh, not sure what time it is here. Let me go back to see if I'm out of time. No, nope, not yet. Um, so a, a few observations now about this overall system. Um, first of all, the, the this little graphic is meant to show that if you have a one action recommender, imagine it's an e-com recommender um, and you haven't bought anything. You go to uh, a new site, you've never, or a new uh, e-com uh, app, and you see things that you've never purchased before online. That's probably happening to a lot of us these days. Um, but um, we can't make any recommendations to you because you haven't bought anything yet. Even though you maybe have searched for things, you've um, put some things in the shopping cart, maybe even um, you've uh, you know clicked on things, viewed a lot of items. Um, the big guys like Netflix and uh, Amazon have similar technology, and so when they follow your uh, your click stream, they can actually make real time recommendations. But these older recommenders, like the one in Spark ALS. Uh, has a pretty hard time of this. Um, and it can only do that if you buy something, if you've converted, if you've done taken the primary action. Uh, the universal recommender is the implementation where we've taken the CCO algorithm, correlated cross occurrence and uh, of Mahout and put it into a, an actual recommender engine. And <clears throat> by using uh, you know techniques like these this multimodality the use of multi uh, multiple actions we can expand the scope of what uh, of the users that we can recommend to so that there's only a few corner cases where uh, we can't give recommendations and that means that the cold start problem is much less severe with uh, with the universal recommender um, so this was implemented a couple of years ago uh, in the most stable versions in uh, Mahout 0 0.13. Uh, and it's also in the most latest uh, release candidate, 14.1. Uh, and it's been in the U Universal Recommender since the beginning. We're now at uh, 0.9 of that release, working on 1.0. Um, so it should be said too that this entire approach can and has been, been applied to lots of non-e-commerce applications, uh, all the way from making um, optimizing search to be more personalized. Um, in, in some cases, uh, in a travel industry case, to uh, other cases where we're doing video recommendations based on uh, what users have, have watched, um, music recommendations, all sorts of other uh, domains. So the uh, the algorithm improves on the quality of RECs. We've uh, shown that with cross-validation tests and some A-B tests, but A-B tests are usually proprietary to an application, so I can't um, share that data. But I think we've got quite a bit of uh, cross-validation uh, verification of this. Uh, you know, it also improves user coverage, so the number of users that can actually get recommendations is always greater. Um, and uh, it uses real-time behavior. So as you're clicking along, uh, maybe you're reviewing a movie or, or giving it thumbs up or something, or just looking at the page. Um, as you go through uh, the site, within a few clicks, you can get recommendations right away even though that's the first time you've gone to the site. Uh, things are definitely scalable. We've uh, implemented this and deployed it in places where there are 
many millions of users and about a million product IDs. So a very large data set uh, in that case. Um, the queries are still in real time. Uh, the current system is returning results in uh, on an order of 20 to 30 milliseconds um, for you know fairly complex queries. Um, a nice thing that we didn't even think about, I think, when we went down this road is that it, if you implement the final query part in a search engine, you can also implement a lot of really important business rules. Because Lucene has things like filters and boosts and um, useful things like that, so that you won't be recommend, you don't have to recommend items that aren't in stock, for instance, or aren't available. Um, just by creating a business rule that says, give me recommendations, but make sure they're, they have this available field true. Um, I'm going to leave you with some resources. Um, and I think I'm probably out of time anyway. So um, feel free to grab the, the, you know, either contact me or get the uh, presentation off the site. Um, just wondering if anybody has any questions now. I am out of time, right, Trevor? Okay, people are there. Yeah, you might want to, uh, Eric, you might want to come to the uh, session, a couple sessions from now where we're going to talk about uh, history and future about. When do I get cut off here, Trevor? Any other questions? I can't imagine it was that <laughs> that clear. Yeah, I, I was talking about the uh, in the slides, we talk about the universal recommender quote unquote. It's uh, the title of the recommender we've implemented with Mahout. Uh, it's in open source on GitHub. Um, it's part of a project that when I say we, I'm part of a consulting firm that implements recommenders and deploys them to uh, commercial sites. Uh, but it's in open source and the server that it's built, uh, that's, that it's a plug into is also in open source. Um, I'll put some more links in that uh, or ping me on email and I'll send you some links that point to the code. It's on GitHub. Yes, the server uses Elasticsearch, which is based on Lucene. So that's a key part of all of this. One of the early problems with co-occurrence, um, some of the recommenders in Mahout was that you basically had to, in batch, make all recommendations for all users and store them in a database or something and then look them up when the user wanted them. Um, which I guess works, but it, it made it really cumbersome and it didn't allow for real time recommendations. So uh, one of the key innovations in this is that we're using Lucene as a, a method for doing that query at the very end. So you we can watch what you're doing in real time and uh, use that to make recommendations. Thanks. Uh, yes, the, okay, uh, Lauren asked if we have any benchmarks. Um, yeah, there's several uh, cross-validation tests that we've run. Uh, they're mentioned in the talk. 
um, what we benchmarked against is other recommender styles, but it's a bit dangerous to use to take uh, cross-validation results with two recommenders that use different technology. Um, the, the, the benchmarks that we have use the most current um, algorithm that's built into Wow. So the most recent work is to um, turn that into a serving recommender. So something that takes input, uh, creates a model and can take uh, real time queries. So that doesn't change the results that come back from that. Uh, so those are all up to date and current. Um, many of the data sets that we have are not, um, are proprietary but um, we continue, uh, continue to find that it performs very well. And again, um, this was based on early looking at the algorithms. Uh, we found that co-occurrence on one, one action type performed better than ALS on one action type. It's just that co-occurrence was hard to implement as a, in a service. Um, so you could say that ALS was uh, at least with the data we had, was somewhat of a step backwards matrix factorization. Um, I'm sure that some data sets it works better on, but um, the ones we had, which are purely ecom, uh, it didn't seem to perform as well. Um, we've also done A-B tests, and those are proprietary because they are, you know, assume the use of a certain site. The ones on Rotten Tomato, um, uh, we uh, we used the universal recommender and we scraped Rotten Tomatoes for movie data. So the results you see in the, um, when you look at a map of K result though, it's not going to mean very much. Uh, you're not going to be able to translate that into like how many people are going to click on a recommendation um, because that relates to your website or your app, what your app looks like and a lot of visual things. But um yeah, that's that data is from uh, recent scraping of Rotten Tomatoes and the current version of the Universal Recommender. I'm belaboring that point. Any other questions before I get shut off here? I may have already gotten shut off. Uh, Cross-validation works offline. So you take a static data set, you put, um, you know, 80% of the data in uh, what you'll call the um, uh, the baseline, and then you'll take 20% of the data and put that in the probe set or the test set. So there's no actual benefit calculation you could do uh, on users because it's a static uh, cross-validation test. Um, I think benefit to the customer is a is a very very good way of putting this, though. Um, what with all the discussion of uh, maybe people, the social media sites optimizing for clicks, but it gives the user no benefit, and in fact they end up being stressed out and um, annoyed by uh, certain aspects of the site. Um, so, so far we keep to, um, does it increase conversions? Uh, so if you're watching movies, does it, does it lead you to increase the number of movies you watch? Um, satisfaction rating is a stat that needs to be defined in uh, maybe something like, do you, do you watch movies that you rate high? But you tend to watch movies that you rate high. You don't even finish ones that you don't rate high. So um, whether they convert, um, is a, is a, or not is a pretty good indicator of, uh, customer satisfaction. Um, but no, nothing, I don't, I wouldn't say that's a, uh, a prime, uh, thing that we look at. I think it should be. Yes, exactly. That's the GitHub link. If anyone cares, um, it has built, the universal recommender is built into Harness if you uh, deploy it. 
Yeah, ping me later, uh, Lauren, if you have any particular um, KPIs for um, satisfaction that you'd like to talk about. Okay, let's see. Trevor, what time do we shut down here? Are we already shut down? Okay. All right. Well, every anybody, uh, thanks for showing up. Um, if you have any questions, ping me on uh, email, and I'll do the best to answer them. I'm never done, Trevor. I can babble on for hours. All right, good. Um, you guys enjoy the rest of Apache Con.